So the next kind of graphs we're going to look at all involve quantitative data. So quantitative data, remember, is things having to do with numbers. So let me just kind of make up some quantitative data. And then we're going to try to make the various kinds of graphs for all the, this data. So let's say you have a bunch of tomato plants. And you keep track of the number of tomatoes on each plant. So here you have 10 tomato plants. The first one has 15. That's a weird color pen. Hold on a second here. Let's go there and there. OK, let's see. 15, much better, okay, 23, 18, 30, 17, 29, 29, 33, 14, and 25, right? So you have 10 tomato plants. Those 10 numbers represent the number of tomatoes on each plant. So we're going to look at a bunch of different ways to uh, do a graph that will display the distribution of this quantitative data. Let's remind ourselves this is all quantitative data quantitative data. And there's a few different kind of graphs we're going to make on this quantitative data. So I'm just going to go kind of one by one talking about how you might do a, uh, <coughs> how you might make a graph for this data. And so the first kind of graph we're going to do is something called a dot plot. And it's a pretty easy idea. You draw yourself a number line. In our data, the smallest number is 15, the biggest number is 33, so I'll just kind of go, okay, uh, 10, let's put 20 over here, 30 over here, 40 over here. Make sure you always number your data. Or sorry, not number, label your data. So this is number of tomatoes. And then a really simple idea, each dot represents uh, one plant. So 15, put a little dot right there. 23, you probably, you actually know, you'd really have this all kind of broken up into 10 things, but 23, I'm not, dot right there. 18, dot right there, and you just, woohoo, you get to make a bunch of dots. 30's right there, uh, 29's right there. Now we had two 29's, you might recall, so we put a little dot on top. Uh, 33 would be about right there. 14 would be about right there. 25 would be about right there. Is that all of them? I'm just missing one. Which one did I miss? 17. That right there. Okay. And this is your dot plot. Okay. Um, advantages of the dot plot. All you can see all the observations. The advantages. All observations are there, so you know exactly each one. The downside of a dot plot. It's pretty darn tedious to do. If you wouldn't really want to make a dot plot, if you had 100,000 tomato plants. You'd be drawing dots and dots and dots and dots and dots. Um, but that's a dot plot. The next kind of uh, graph we're going to make is something called a stem plot. This is sometimes called a stem and leaf plot also. And the big idea is you take it, so one of the plants had 23 tomatoes, right? We're going to break that into a stem and a leaf. So we're going to see two and three, where this is the stem, stem, and this is the leaf. So our stems, because our data goes from basically 15 to uh, 30, are just one, two, three. So I'm going to draw a vertical bar, and then one, two, and three. Those are the possible stems. And then your leaves, you go in order. So in terms of the, you know, the numbers in the teens, You've got 15, 17, and 18. Uh, the numbers in the 20s, you've got 23, 29, 29. Oh, let's go 25. I'm sorry, I'd use the eraser. Let's erase that. We've got 5 and 9. And then in the 30s, we have... I'm missing one some aren't I? 3, 9, 9... What am I doing wrong here? Just hold on one second. Oh, yeah, I missed 14. Oops. Let's start over. Okay, here we go. 4, 5, 7, 8. And in the 30s, here we go. We've got 30 and 33. And then usually what you do is in terms of label, you draw a little key somewhere off to the side. So I would say 1, 4 represents 14 tomatoes. Okay? So that's a stem plot. Um, there are a couple versions of a stem plot, and actually, uh, I'm going to show you those different versions now. There is a, something called a stem plot with split stems. And this might be where, for example, you've got 
a whole bunch of data is all on the same stem. So let's say all of your tomato plants, for example, were in the 20s in terms of number of tomatoes. So if I wanted to do this data with split stems, I would do something like this. I would say 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So this first one right here is going to represent 10 through 14, then 15 through 19, 20 through 24, 25 through 29, 30 through 34, and so on. So if I did it here, 14 would go there, then 5, 7, 8. Uh, the 20s, I would just have a 3 here, 25, 9, 9, and then 30, 33. That looks good, okay? Um, that's split stamps, and still you would draw a little chart. One, one, 14, it means 14 tomatoes. Okay, you might want to do that where you again where all your data is a little bit more clustered together. Um, stem and leaf plot or stem plot. I'm not going to do the whole thing. It's something called a back-to-back -back stem plot. Back-to-back -back stem plot. This is a case where let's say you had two different sets of data. For example, let's say I want to do something with I don't know the. Uh, number of friends on Facebook with juniors and seniors. So what you might do here is the stems go down the middle. So let's just say hypothetically 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, something like that. So then over here I would say 83, this would be some junior, this would be some senior, excuse me, who's got 83 friends. If I put a 7 over here, this would mean a junior with 87 friends. So on the left hand side are all the juniors, on the right hand side are all the seniors, and then you know this would be, I'm making up these numbers here obviously, um, uh, I don't know, 1, 3, 4, 4, 7, 2, I'm just making up some numbers here, uh, 7, 8, 9, 1, one, two, three, four, five, nine. So for example, this number right here would represent there's a senior with 125 friends on Facebook, whereas this number right here would mean there's a junior with 114 friends on Facebook. You notice I've tried to do it where the numbers, I made one little mistake right here with this one, that kind of breaks the rule. The numbers you want to have in general go from small to big. So let's actually change this one to a nine. So there's 109 friends. But you see how actually the numbers on the left-hand side, oh, I made a mistake here with the two, huh? Let's make that eight. There we go. Okay. So that's, that would be a back-to-back -back stem plot, only really used when you want to compare different sets of data. Okay? Um, and our last important graph of unquantitative data is something called a histogram. Okay, and a histogram, probably the most common one, um, and you've seen this before, it's very much like a bar graph. A bar graph and a histogram have a lot in common except that a histogram is used for quantitative data, bar graph for categorical data. So I'll draw an xy axis, then you break up your x axis into groups. So I'm just going to go, for example, to some categories here. This is going to be 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Always label your axes, number of tomatoes. Okay, and then over here we'll go number of plants. So one, two, three, four, five. It's about, uh, this is going to be number of plants. And then the question is between the 10 and 15. Now we actually have one plant that is exactly 15 tomatoes. This first little category here goes 10 to 14. The little hit, if there's a number that is the actual ha hash mark, it goes on the right-hand one. So we have one plant that's uh, 10 to 14. In the 15 through 19 range, we actually have three. In the 20 to 25 range, we only have one, that one that's 23. Uh, in the 25 through tw 29 range, we have three. And then we have two over here. And that's a histogram. Um, there are quite a few uh, pieces of software on the calculator that can actually do this for you. We'll spend a lot of time in class doing this on the calculator. 
Um, just a couple uh, quick observations about this before we move on. This idea of number of plants, this is also called frequency. Number of things is also called, is sometimes called frequency. You could, if you wanted to, make your y-axis not in terms of frequency or number of plants, but you could do it in terms of percent. So we have 10 total plants. Instead of doing it in number of plants, you could have done it in terms of percent of total. This would have been 10%, 20%, 30%, and so on. If you do it in terms of percent, the name of the idea of percent is called relative frequency. It's probably more common to see things in terms of just plain old frequency, but frequency means number of things. Relative frequency means percent. 